Hi. <laughs> Hi, sis. How are you? <laughs> Very well, Nelly. Good to see you. It's good to see you too. Wow. Yeah, it's been a while. So we're spreading the fire here. Right? No, we're going to cool and Yes. <laughs> wow. Like, I've been waiting for this conversation for so long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like. No, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for having me here. Um, shout out to you as well for doing this. Um, yeah, man, things must change, hey? Wow, some of they us... must just switch up. Some of us are going to Parliament soon, eh? <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> wow. And how old are you? I'm 25. And you're just going to be living... No, but it's a big age, guys. 25 <laughs> is a big age. It's just that we've been... Nitin, it's social has to think that it's mm. not. It's a big age. This is where we are most productive and this is where we are most passionate and that's where we should be used yeah. to change the country and to move young people's mm. lives forward. Mm. You know? Because mm. mm. after I turn 30 or 35 or 40, I'll be like, yo, in Ghana, Zam. Exactly, exactly. No, no, like mm. congratulations. Thank you. Like shout out to you. Like, Thank you, sis. It's not easy, no matter where you are, to yeah. actually gain that recognition and we'll be watching. Thank you. You must, you, must watch. you must watch. You must watch. So look, I want to get straight into some, some mm. stuff. You know, um, we met first. Yeah. With uh, remember Quasi moment. Yes, 2016. Yes, I remember. Yo, people don't know. That Abazi, after that that moment, we came to hide in your place. Yo, you came back to my place. <laughs> so that's where the, the, the remember Quasi people were. Yeah. But, but anyway, we'll leave that. Mm. Um, you know, that moment you exploded onto the scene as a radical young black woman, mm -hmm. unapologetic about the importance of your feminism. Yeah. And, you know, I just wanted to first ask you why, you know, that is so important to mm -hmm. your activism in politics, in all the worlds you occupy, and why you think that's such a crucial part of who you are. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it is our moral obligation to just stand up at the face of injustice and oppression and black women and children for that matter experience the most injustice and violence um, on the face of the earth you know they are when you talk about violence the first thing that comes into your mind is black women when you talk about victimhood the first people that come to your mind is black women and you know my positionality in society having grown up as a black girl you know society trying their best to tame me and seeing how other women who've lived before me were treated and exploited and violated and oppressed and silenced and erased mm -hmm. from the books of history, you know, ga ga gave me a push. Black women can't breathe in this world. We are constantly gated, we are constantly chucked out, we are constantly ostracized and alienated from spaces that belong to us just as much. We are constantly violated and treated as if we are not human. So for me, mm -hmm. it's about giving black women a human face, you know, because we suffer so much for different reasons, because we have dark skin, because we are less and because we live in rural areas, because we are queer, because we don't have money, you know, because we are women. So that is, that is part and parcel of why it is, it is so important for me as a black feminist to say, no, sure. you know, count me amongst those women mm. who are saying, mm. not in my name. And I mean, this issue manifests itself in, in a thousand different ways every second in, yeah. our, in our society. If anything defines our society, it's, mm -hmm. this, it's this deep patriarchy. Yeah. And, you know, the most recent example is mm -hmm. this Google Mube situation. Yes. Where it seems like when you stand up to protest mm -hmm. against your marginalization, yeah. you're punished yes. for actually resisting. Yes. No, and no, that, no, is the, thoughts on this. that is the irony of it all. Because here we have a woman who says, guys, I was abused, I was sexually harassed, I was sexually violated. And then when I spoke out, I got kicked out of mm. the working place. Ne? So let's just clarify what happened. So she mm. felt violated. She, she felt spoke, violated right? and spoke up. Yeah. And then was kicked out of the workplace. Went to yeah. the CCMA. The CCMA said she's telling the truth. But she was now brought back into the working space. Mm. And then she says, okay, let me take another step. Sure. Because this Google Nube story has been going on for a while, mm. actually. Mm. And then she steps out using her constitutional right to protest, sure, sure. to protest, right? And she wasn't even nude. That's what makes me angry. Like, we've seen nude, guys. We mm. see nude every day on mainstream media. We see nude on music videos. We see nude at the beach. Sure. 
Sure. We saw nude last week in Cape Town. Cyclists were riding their bikes <laughs> nude mm. and there was no arrest. Mm. So now we know that, no, the issue here is that she's a black woman, mm. firstly. And secondly, she is resisting oppression. So how dare you use what we use to oppress you to now fight us? Because it's okay if you're naked, you can be naked. Mm. We don't mind you being naked, but you must be naked for the male gaze. Mm. You must be naked for male consumption. You must be naked for male desire, not for resistance. When you become naked for resistance, we will punish you. Mm. And they, they, they portrayed it for us. She was harassed by the system. Yeah. She was harassed by the institution. Mm. She was harassed by her bosses. She was harassed even by the justice system. The place where women should find refuge in was the same place where she was harassed even further. Mm. No, it's absolutely. It's, mm. it's, it's incredible to, to think that with the crisis of this scale in our society, the yeah. mainstream media agenda, politics, just doesn't seem to be catching up to where yeah. our country actually is. Yeah. Uh, and it's 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 wonderful to see that this kind of voice will be going into parliament. I literally cannot uh, wait. Like in, in many ways for this because this is this is a place where we agree. Yes. I'm not even going to pretend and ask you like mm. no, but no. But we agree. what about it? Yeah, like straight up. Like, and 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 taking that message from someone with your voice where mm. you are right now is, is going to be so exciting. Mm. Um, but let's get to some areas where we, you know, or yeah. at least some tougher questions here. Yeah. You know, because I also want to make people feel sure that I'm not going to let anyone off the hook. Yes. On this, on this and as you shouldn't. Exactly. Yeah. You know, um, so linking the question around gender and patriarchy to mm -hmm. the EFF. Yeah. You know, I just want to ask you very simply because mm -hmm. I think the media gets the critique of the EFF wrong. Mm -hmm. They're always talking about this and that and, and following the big men around. Yeah. But for me, the gender critique is the strongest critique. Mm. Does the EFF have a serious problem with patriarchy? And I'm very happy that it's the strongest critique, you know, because it also gives uh, the EFF pressure to take young women's voices seriously. Um, so critique is progressive sometimes, unless it becomes, or it goes to an extent where you start erasing women in your quest for a critique. Um, the EFF is patriarchal, the EFF is misogynist, the EFF is a microcosm of society. Mm -hmm. Society is toxic, society is harboring toxic masculinity, it grooms toxic masculinity. From our homes we are taught to make space for hyper masculinity, for toxic masculinity and to constantly make, make ourselves invisible. That is how we are raised. I'm crossing my legs now, not because it's comfortable to sit like this, but because from the age when I was four I was told, you know, because the men around you might feel somehow. So we are constantly taught to exist for the comfort of men. And that doesn't change just because you signed an EFF membership form. No, we are still from a patriarchal home that makes the girl child wash the dishes when she didn't even eat. And there's a boy child who made most of the dishes. We are still coming from homes that send our rapists away to villages instead of sending them to jail. We are still from families that say to us, no, you are trying to break your mother's marriage because you said my mother's husband raped me. We come from those families. We are those girls. Because people think that when you speak out against those things, then you are no longer part of the uh, problem. No, we are speaking because we come from those families. We are in those families. We are in those places. Even in the EFF, we live with comrades who have been accused of such things. Mm. We live with comrades who are patriarchal and toxic. And that is why we speak even against the EFF as EFF women. You know, our gaze is not just outside because even in the space, we have to be, sp we have to be safe everywhere in all the spaces that we occupy. Look, and if you say that, to what extent do you think that the situation can be salvaged? Because when you look at top leadership, yeah. um, when you look at some of the traditions within the party, you could suggest that, you know what, this, is, this may not be a space where a radical feminist mm -hmm movement can actually grow at all. Yeah. Why do you think that there's, this is a project that can be salvaged? Then? There are many, many women in the EFF. Uh, you know, the circle of the activism amongst the women is what keeps all of us there. You know, we don't activist alone. You know, we don't feminist alone. There's a huge group of women on days when some of us can't speak 
There's another multitude that's speaking on days where we preserve our safety or we feel threatened or intimidated. There's other women who speak up. We even call each other out, actually, as EFF women to say, no, but you are quiet on this issue. There's a leadership there, there who did this and this and you didn't say anything. And then you start speaking out. So creating a space where women can speak has to be deliberate, right? It doesn't come overnight. You don't wake up in a political party that suddenly is like, you know, no, we have to constantly push society to get to that point. The fact that we are at a point where black women's voices are taken seriously in the EFF is because we've been pushing back through and through and no one has been getting off the hook easily. You know, and that is the culture we want to create. Because it doesn't mean that Mang Sue Kayang is a meeting in a branch meeting that I won't experience patriarchy. No, I experience it. I experience a man wanting to speak while I'm speaking. You know, forgetting that, no, here, uh, I am a comrade as well. And I'm equal to you. And we have to call out that behavior as well. So we all have to unlearn and learn. Even myself for that matter. No, sure, sure. And I mean, for me, one of the interesting angles of this debate that really has just been completely lost. Yeah. Uh, let's say with the, the recent sort of debacle around Karima Brown. Yes. I know you were very vocal was there was this critique where are EFF women? Yes. Right? Which on the one hand, when you look at the top leadership, you accept. But on the other hand, if the mainstream media is not mm. going to give women within the movement a platform, mm. don't turn around and say where then are Then where you? are we? When yeah. You're following the men all the time. In, in fact, that is that is double violence, if I can call it that. Because firstly, not only are you uh, silencing us, you're also erasing our work, you know? And it so happens that the person who said this was a white woman. You know, what changes the game altogether. You, you don't tell black women when and how to feminist, when we've been feministing. And at the same time, then focus your gaze, your spectacle, your articles, your interviews on the men. You know, you interview men all the time. You run around them every day. You were telling me that, like, the, you can literally mm. see the way media focuses on yes, men, like yes, in Parliament, for yes. example. Like, they would rather write a story about pinky finger than talk about the fact that Delhi Silinguenya covered really serious issues about women. They'd rather talk mm. about a joke that somebody made in Parliament, a man for that matter, than talk about what the Women's Caucus is saying at the time. Yeah. Because even our guests, guys, Songe, we, we are all socialized to be patriarchal. Yeah and hyper-masculine and toxic as well, especially against women, you know. So even the media itself is also a microcosm society and they have to be more deliberate about fixing this air because it's, it's really deep and it's also violent as well because you are erasing, and Commissar Lian said it very nicely, that if you go on the ground and you ask women who are marginalized, the people who aren't insourcing, mm. the people who go to rape cases every day, the people who call the EFF to say, my boss is doing this and this to me, Ask those people who are EFF women, they will tell you. And secondly, ask us guys. You want to now set the criteria of how EFF women must feminist when we don't have any credential of how you feministed before. As a white woman, your positionality doesn't allow you that. And that's what they also miss as well. There's also different dynamics on how you can engage people. I can't go there and ask people uh, or ask the LGBTI, where, is, where are the LGBTI voices when someone is violated? No, when you see an injustice, speak out. Don't patronize, don't want to outsource people's activism. Sure. That is also violence on its own because you want to regulate their voices. Speak out. When we see people speak out, we will also speak out because sometimes we genuinely don't know or that's not that because mm. we also know that that is a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when data falls, this will be free. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because they're forcing us to watch some of these programs, guys, you on know? TV. And then you're watching it, guys, once data guys, falls. Guys, please, you know? We're gone. Then, you, then you can make the revolution look good. <laughs> yes, <Okay>. yes. Um, <laughs> So, so look, I want to also just uh, put this, this corruption question to you. Yeah. Because this is also an endemic problem in our society. Yes. Um, I sometimes wonder how people only focus on certain forms of corruption. Mm. But still, you know, allegations have been made against the EFF. We yeah. this constantly from the mainstream media yeah. as well. How do you respond to this notion that the leadership of the EFF mm. is corrupt? Yeah. Um, and where do you stand on questions like VBS mm. and questions like corruption, especially if the EFF gets more power? Yeah. Um, how can people trust? Mm. Should they trust? Or, or is there substance to these allegations? The VBS debacle is 
is a very intense one and it's one that breaks my heart intensely because at the helm of uh, the repercussions are black women. You know, black women's money is gone, you know, and we also want economic freedom for black women. You know, so there is no way I could possibly defend in the VBS. Corruption is not something that we can be tiptoeing around. It's something we must be strong on. And if someone is found to be guilty of corruption, they must go. They must be arrested. We've been reiterating this. And I think what calmed my anxieties is the fact that the EFF has been saying, bring us evidence. You know, and I think what makes me angry about this particular situation is how people want to center the EFF and the VBS uh, thing when the EFF wasn't even mentioned in the report. And I agree with that, mm -hmm. but because and that's absolutely yeah. True, right? But let, but let's now, having agreed on that, focus on the EFFs. Role, yeah. Right. My question to you is, let's say in some world, yeah. somewhere, wrongdoing is found. Mm -hmm. Because we've we've been down this road before, where, yes. where we say no. If so there, many times, if yeah. If there's wrongdoing, mm. then and then wrongdoing is found, and then another excuse comes. Mm. If wrongdoing is found, can we trust you? You're going to Parliament, not just to represent the yeah. EFF, but young people. Yeah. To to be to hold that line. Mm. And I always say this, like EFF e movement, there are e youth, ne? The EFF is not some distant movement that you see on TV only. The EFF is ours. The EFF belongs to the people in the townships. It belongs to those in rural areas. We, don't, we are not voting cows in the EFF. We actively choose our leadership. We actively choose who leads us from the branch level to all kinds of levels, right? So now, if you want to hold the EFF accountable, the best bet you can give is to also be active in the EFF. For me, that has been uh, my modus operandi. You know, because we, we were raised to think that politics is a game for old people. Mm. You know, that is something that happens far there for those selected mm. few that yeah, are special. Mm. You know, and I speak to young people all the time. I'm like, guys, you I'm must be involved. Absolutely. I'm a ward counselor of these wards. Mm -hmm. It must be you. Okay, well, we'll mm -hmm. hold you to it. Mm -hmm. I know you're going to Parliament soon, so we'll be able to see. <laughs> <laughs> but um, look, I mean, I don't just just want to grill you. Yeah. Because um, and and everyone's going to be grilled on this show. We must be know? grilled, we guys. Must, we know? must be grilled. Um, and we've got ANC people and DA people mm. coming too. But you know, I also wanted to ask you just about some interesting things. Like this is one of the youngest people who could be going to our parliament. Yeah. Like what music? What do you listen to? Like, <laughs> yeah. What do you like? Are you like? Are you like? <laughs> Do you turn up? Yeah, like, I twerk. You, <laughs> like, <laughs> so, like, what, like what, what kind of music do you listen to? I love trap music. What? Yeah, really like yeah, yo, 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 there's some video of mine of me twerking <laughs> that trended for a while. Okay. When people were slut shaming me, they're like, mm. oh, she twerks. And I'm like, yes, guys, yeah. I'm a young person, I twerk. I listen to Drake, I love Drake. Drake. I love Drake, yo guys, yo, yo, Drake, you understand that? Uh, okay, like, okay. Drake gets it. J. Cole, J. Cole, I don't know their names, guys. Mm. Like, I'm not that deep into music. Yeah, sure. But the names that I can tell you, yeah, yeah. Rouge. Rouge is killing me. Oh my word. Rouge's flow is something. I'm a Rouge then. When Rouge performs, I sing every song. What? I was even on one of her music videos, yeah, twerking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was with Dolo, right? <laughs> Dololo, yeah, yes. Yeah, that's really yes. cool. Yes. Yeah. So I'm a Rouge person, Rouge mm. comes my imposter syndrome. Sure. You know, I recommend Rouge's music to every young black woman. Like whenever yeah, you feel Rouge, like you don't Rouge's belong like, in a space, actually, just to listen Rouge to Rouge. Rouge. Show, no, right? please do. Like we must, hey? Please do, her politics are lit. Yeah. Rouge is conscious, like yeah. as like okay. AF. You must, you must drop some of her rhymes in parliament. Like when like I went, she's ooh. in speech or something. <laughs> like. <laughs> oh, man, I'll definitely, nice. I also yeah. like Boiti. Um, mm. She's coming up strong in the game. Mm. Uh, and I also like black motion. Oh yes, black motion. Mm. Ooh, black motion, okay. guys. Black motion. Yeah, it's under now. But when I go to my piano, generally. Really? Yeah, my piano is my thing. Okay. Kulisa my piano. Okay. You know, I was groomed. <laughs> <laughs> I was raised and yeah. groomed by my piano. Those oh, young wow. boys and girls in my hood, yeah. people I grew up with, yeah. they make music for me. I also like AK and Casper. Okay. Um, okay. I attend their 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 performances yeah. and things yeah. as well, and concerts really and stuff. Cool. So I'm a young person generally. Sure. Um, I love me my Rihanna. I love me my her. Okay. I love me my radio as well. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. I I twerk like I think. That 
that sums it up. Like okay, you, I'm a if, Cardi B if we person. Knew anything from this interview, you is that I twerk? Done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Drake. Yeah, and we need to get Rouge on this. Yes, that yes, it. yes. Now that's 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 cool. Like, cause mm. what's interesting about you um, is that you're kind of also at the intersection of like popular culture yes. and politics. Some yes. people know you just as the political activist. Mm. Others know you as an actress, yeah. playwright. But what's it like, like being in those two worlds? And mm. how do you see those worlds speaking to each other in South Africa? Yeah. So they, they don't often come together, yeah. but it's where young people live, you know, between politics and entertainment. Yeah. Um, you know, my journey has been one that is actually very painful, especially in the arts, because it's like I would get punished because I have a political voice. Mm. You know, my agent would call me and be like, Nana, they want you. Yeah. They think you're amazing, yeah. but they don't like that what pops up when they Google you is mm. Fizz Must Fall activist arrested. Mm. You know, and and I've been punished for having my political convictions, right? But what people are missing is that art is political. Already, the purpose of art is to be political. Art is for society. Art is a mirror of society. Art captures the conflict of society, whether it's internal conflict, whether it's external conflict, it captures conflict. And with my plays, all my plays are political. My latest play, Shewelele, um, was, was an ode to Fees Must Fall, you know, I call it my love letter to the revolution, mm, mm. you know, and I'm, I'm, an, I'm a creative at heart. I can't divorce myself from creativity. For me, like, mm -hmm. the beautiful thing is how you can say certain things that you just can't articulate through art. Yeah. Much better than you could ever say it. Yes. In a piece of writing. Yes. Even activism. Yes. And also, in Dabaye, Oguti, women get punished more for dual existence. Mm. It only affects women. Mm. Men can be artists and creatives mm. and politicians. Mm. Mm. We've seen this, yeah. you know, like a man can write a book on why he would vote for the DA and still be on radio, mm. you know. A, a man will act and be in Hollywood and still be in Parliament. Mm. A man can DJ, the CIC DJs, oh. and still be seen as president material. Sure. Sure. But the moment a woman is like, oh, I also act, mm. it's like, uh -uh, then stick to acting. Mm. You know, society doesn't allow dual existence for women and we are many things. You know, we come into politics not because we are happy to be politicking, we come because we are activists first and foremost. As young people in, in, in this moment, yeah. you, you exist in so many worlds. Yeah. You can't let your identity be confined to just one. We're, oh yes. We're too, mm -hmm. too complex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm really looking forward to seeing that complexity. Yeah. No, it's gonna shine through. Maybe so you need to parliament the ego at break, but then you wanna go at vet la payana. How na lady goes the ranja and manage also to Udivate, we are MC okay, we are twerk la payana, you know. We'll ask Madam Speaker, could you please put the trap on? Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. You must vote for the EFF on the eighth of May. We are very clear on that one. I want to see you in Parliament. You specifically. Thank you. SMWX. No young people are around the decision-making table. Let some new voices come to the fore. Follow us on WhatsApp and catch us live Tuesdays and Thursdays. Out with the old, in with the new. SMWX.